Welcome back everyone into the start of a brand new series. Check out my latest project car, a 1964 Mercury Comet. Now, this is gonna be part of a multi-part series. I'm gonna show you how to tune your carburetor to perfection. When I'm done, you won't even need fuel injection. But to start, we've gotta replace that tired old carburetor. So let's get rid of that old small Holley 450 and put something on that's gonna be a lot better for performance. Let's pop the hood, see what I purchased and get started. So now that I've given you a little bit of an overview of what I purchased, we're gonna kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this video. And the goal here, you know, in its simplest form is just to, you know, take my wife out for a drive. We just bought this car, I trailered at home. Big issue, um, it's not big, but it's an issue, is there is a significant uh, fuel leak coming from the bottom of the carburetor. So uh, I'll zoom in real quick and show you what that is. We'll talk about a couple different ways you could fix this issue and then we'll talk about what I did and that's going to lead well into the next videos which I'm going to do. It's not just going to apply to a Mercury Comet. It's going to apply to any old car or truck that you were trying to tune up and get the most out of your um, your carbureted setup. So let me show you what's going on right now and then we'll quickly kind of remedy that. And this is just gonna be a very basic carburetor install, getting it on the road. We're not gonna be fine tuning until we get the wide band, but more of that to come. So let's take a look at this first. In here, obviously we've got the 302 Ford. Let's pop off the air cleaner. And there she is, 450 Holly. So this has been sitting um, overnight. I haven't driven it. There is still liquid fuel um, you know, it's not just a tiny drip that's evaporated. It's a pretty good size leak. And I think it is coming from the underside front of this old 450 Holley. Um, and certainly you could you could rebuild this and it probably wouldn't be a terrible idea. I think it's probably a well-sized carburetor for this very stock mild 302. But I know that in the future, I probably will want more horsepower and that 450 Holley is not gonna cut it. Now, a lot of people out there love Holley carburetors and I personally have no issue with Holley, um, but I do have a bit more experience tuning Edelbrocks and my experience between the Edelbrock and the Holley has been, um, yes, I think the Holleys perform extremely well, especially on a dyno or at a racetrack where you're going wide open throttle. I don't think anybody will argue with that. But for around town drivability on a cruiser, um, I think the Edelbrock may have a little bit of advantage. I, I really like how easy it is to change step up springs. Um, it's really not hard to rejet them. The whole top of the carburetor comes off. It's not a huge deal. Um, but I just like kind of the methodical, easy approach uh, of how to adjust the carburetor. It really doesn't take that much. You buy yourself a small little kit and um, you can really tune these things up. So um, we're not gonna get into the fine tune-ups right now. We're just gonna go ahead and throw this on. I'm gonna tell you real quick which carburetor I purchased from Edelbrock and why. So this is the Edelbrock part number 1906. This is their newer AVS2 line. The big thing with the AVS2 is it has what's called annular boosters. Um, and the annular boosters are supposed to provide, instead of just a squirt coming in from the side, you get a whole ring of fuel coming in. So the idea I think is you're getting a more, uh, more atomization, uh, better part throttle drivability. I previously had a, um, I think it was either 600 or 650 performer, pretty standard. This is just kind of like a little bit newer version of that. These retail, I picked this up from my local AutoZone, believe it or not, uh, they're about 389. So a very, you know, inexpensive new carburetor in my opinion. And this is a 650 CFM, obviously quite a bit larger than what I have. Uh, this, the 450 Holley that's on there right now, it has a mechanical choke. This will have an electric choke. That will definitely be beneficial since there's no linkage or anything hooked up inside the car. Um, it actually starts up somewhat okay um, right now uh, without it, but it is summertime. So when you get in the winter time, you're definitely gonna want you know, that choke out here in Utah, which um, this carburetor will have. And um, hopefully it's just kind of a direct swap. Like I said, we're gonna throw this on here just for the purpose of going and driving. I may not even adjust the idle air mixtures, we'll see, because um, we are gonna do some more videos in the future, uh, very, very detailed on a methodical approach of what you need to do to dial 
in your carburetor. But for right now, let's go ahead and throw this on. Um, it looks like there are some aftermarket brackets here for the kick down cable, the throttle cable. I'm gonna take some measurements. I'm not so worried about uh, the throttle cable, but what I am more worried about is I wanna make sure I don't lose this adjustment because this, for the TV cable seems to be shifting okay. Um, so I'm probably gonna try and grab a few measurements here just to see where it is kind of just in its idle. And if I have to adjust that later, I can. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that with a ruler. I'll take some pictures and I may even fire this thing up real quick just to see what it idles at so I can try and match that idle RPM. A little trick if you don't have a tack in your car, uh, these dial back timing lights like this one from Innova, part number 3568 alpha, um, these actually will list RPM. So you just hook them up to your battery, hook it up to the number one plug wire, which on a Ford is on the passenger side, unlike a Chevy, and uh, we'll fire it up. We'll let it warm up for just a couple minutes and we will see what the idle RPM is just so I can match that. I wanna try and get it back apples to apples to how it was. Um, Cause like I said, it actually runs okay minus the fuel leak, which is just a fire hazard in my opinion. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. RPM actually came up a little bit, 675. Remember, there's no, there's no choke on this, so. making a test run here because you know inevitably you'll probably have to go to the parts store so what I noticed is the TV cable it lines up pretty well with the hole but when you put it on this side and you try to rotate it it hits the valve cover if I flip it and put it on the other side there's like a little piece on the back of this linkage that doesn't let it rotate so I've got an old one inch spacer I'm gonna try and put the one inch spacer on there lift it up and see if that will allow it to move the way it should. Then I may need to get some little tiny spacers so I can bring that whole bracket up so it's in a straight line. Um, I did read that these 302 Fords like to have, or they run a little higher uh, fuel pressure. So I may pick up a fuel pressure regulator while I'm at the store, just a cheapo and a new fuel filter, some more fuel line hose, just like little odds and ends. So we're gonna try and test fit everything, make our list, run to the store, grab it, and then get it all together. So I put the carb spacer on, I need longer studs, um, but that does fix this issue. There's a little bit of binding when it's at full open. I'm gonna see if I can put some spacers under here to raise this up. So that's more in a straight line and hopefully that fixes that issue. So I wound up heading out to my local parts store and I picked up some things. Now this isn't gonna be an all-inclusive list of every single time you were to do something like this, but this is what I chose and kind of why. So uh, the previous air cleaner was pretty small. Um, it may have some fitment issues. We'll see, I may have to go back to this, but just looking at the way this is designed, I feel like I will get more airflow. Plus it comes a new filter, they're like 30 bucks. No big deal, pick this guy up. Um, in order to get the TV cable to sit up higher, I removed the TV cable. So it's in line with the carburetor with the spacer. I had found um, some small, just little bushings, I guess you'll call them. I drilled these out. So it's funny, one hole is a quarter inch, the other is 5 16 So I drilled those out. They're not pretty, but they'll work and that'll bring the TV cable up so it's in a straight line. So that's good. Because I'm gonna run a spacer, I need another gasket. Your carburetor will come with one gasket, but I will need another one. Um, and this is just going to, so I have you know, a gasket on each side. I could reuse the old gasket, but it's probably not a great idea. Anytime you're gonna be in there, I'd grab some fuel hose just to replace your old fuel line. Um, with that, why not get yourself a fuel filter? It's the clear type so you can see if you've got crud in your tank. Um, this is like the one thing that I picked up that I think is I, I wouldn't have done if it wasn't a Ford, but from doing some reading online, um, they like to run a higher fuel pressure and the new carburetor likes to only see like five and a half to six PSI so I can set that. And what else? Oh, I had to get some miscellaneous nuts and bolts. 
a, a small little plug here for the back of the intake manifold. And that's pretty much it. So um, maybe I'll throw the time lapse back on and start putting everything back together. I'm leaking from my brand new stinking regulator. All right, swapped on the fittings that almost appear to be too large, but I think the problem is there's not enough distance to get the crimp. That was a lot of fuel. I was leaking more fuel there than I was before I started. That's never the move. You know, it did kind of sound, for the brief moment that it ran, I would almost say better, like smoother. Well, let's try it again. Leaking again. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, it's the following day. It's actually July 4th. Happy July 4th, everybody. Um, so yesterday I was really hoping to get this thing all wrapped up. Um, I actually skimped on some of the filming. I'm sorry, I was really trying to get things put together. I ran into a couple issues swapping over from the Holly to the Edelbrock. I had to actually extend the adjuster for the throttle cable, um, which, mean, <laughs> which meant I had to take two nuts, MIG weld them together, do all this crap. Anyways, it's, it's kind of working. Um, however, I got it running, as you saw in the videos, um, that stupid Mr. Gasket, I don't recommend that that piece. Um, it was leaking out of the threads. I had it tightened really tight, and, and I hate tightening anything into an aluminum housing really, really hard because you run the risk of cracking it. So I got it in there to where I felt like it was very tight for as hard as I could hold it in my hand with a wrench, and it was still pouring out of the threads. So it's not worth burning down your car. I chucked that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just run it without a fuel pressure regulator order like a much better one. Get that installed in the car later. My goal is to get this thing just running and driving so I can take my wife around the block. Um, that'd be a fun little 4th of July thing to do. So um, what I need to do now, a couple things. I gotta put, remove the portion of fuel line that had the regulator in it. I need to put just a straight section of fuel line in. That's super easy. Um, I had to get some cotter pins for the throttle cable linkage. I need to hook up the electric choke, which means I need to find a keyed ignition source. So electric chokes are super easy one side goes to ground the other side goes to a source that is keyed on so when the engine is running it's on when the key is off it's off so i just need to find where that is on this car i really don't want to tune on this carburetor until i get the fuel pressure regulator um, and some other things hooked up so um, my arm's hurting let's go ahead and get back to it and uh, hopefully we get this thing fired up soon edelbrock is working great um let me show you what i did just to wrap up kind of the loose odds and ends here. Uh, a couple things, I had to grab a little cotter pin here just to get uh, my throttle cable hooked up. This is where I welded two nuts together and then I ground down those welds. I'll probably paint that at some point, but basically the throttle cable is too short. So I did this so I could lengthen it. You can then now adjust everything to get this nice and taut. Um, I've got the TV cable hooked up, no issues. I've got my spacers down there. Um, everything is hooked up. You've got a few options with any carburetor on where you run your vacuum advance. I've got mine on this side. Typically, um, one of the sides will have 
vacuum at all times. And then other ones will have timed vacuum. So I've got it hooked up to the manifold side so it has vacuum at all times. Um, this thing runs great. So this is why I went Edelbrock. Basically, this is how you need to get this thing started. It's super easy. Once you get your choke and everything hooked up, um, you just go in and you touch the gas one time. And when you do that, it provides a pump shot of fuel. It also shuts the choke. You turn your key and it will fire up every time. And I love it. No issues. I mean, this thing starts up and drives. I haven't tuned a single thing because I don't have the fuel pressure regulator and I hate to jump out of sequence. Really, you could do it, but to really make good videos for you guys and do this all correctly, what I wanna do is truly follow the steps in the instruction manual, which means I wanna get that fuel pressure regulator hooked up so I can confirm I have a steady five and a half PSI. And at that point, I can go and start fine tuning the carburetor. The good news is you really don't have to fine tune it, even though this is a 650 Holley on a 302 Ford that's totally stock, no cam, no headers, no heads, nothing. It runs fine, it accepts you know, the throttle, I can punch it from a dead stop, it takes off. That's why I love the Edelbrock. So um, we'll wrap this all up. I'll show you a couple quick videos so you can hear what this car sounds like, and then I'll come back and tell you what we got planned next. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it's gonna sound a lot better when we get it tuned. In the next video, I'm gonna go ahead and order a fuel pressure regulator with a gauge to make sure this thing is sitting at five and a half PSI. Once I do that, I will adjust the idle mixture screws. You don't need any sort of super special tools for that. Um, I like to use a vacuum gauge, and if you have a tachometer or you have a timing light that shows RPM, that's all you need. I'll get to that in the next video. And then after that, we will install a wide band, then we'll really get to tuning. But for right now, that's kind of the next step. So I really hope you enjoyed this. If you did like this content, please do not forget, like and subscribe. I really appreciate it if you guys subscribe. I've got plenty of other videos. So if you wanna see videos of my wife ZL1 racing my old C10 pickup, I've got that. I've got old trucks. I've got everything. So check out the rest of my channel. And until next time, have a good one. I can't wait to see you back again so we can work on the 64 Comet.